survive hunger. Okay, drink some water, drink some tea, you can drink a cow if you wanted to. If you're actually hungry, I want you to get your food, but I don't want you to make a poor choice because you're hungry, right? It might be to build up your planning, preparing skill or something. Um, plan, prep for the week and day. So I had a coach call with somebody uh, this afternoon, and she was, we had talked about what she was going to do tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be her shopping day, right? So she's going to shop. So we talked about what kinds of things she might try to make this week, and we talked about her master shopping list and those types of things, okay? So she planned. So her prep is also tomorrow. She's going to prep some food items for the week, so she's not having to cook all week. So she's going to do that for the week. But then every day, she needs to have an idea of what do I need today? What am I going to have today? How does this work in for me? So you have to, this step, number five, I find is one of the big ones that just falls apart from people. And if this gets lost, it's really hard to do some of the things that we talked about. Okay? So planning and preparing is, a, is something you're going to have to master to be successful. Okay? Uh, food log. Yeah, <laughs> they don't like food blogs, but we, we need food blogs. You have to write it down. <laughs> need to take. Some of my clients, I've just given up on writing, I have to be honest. So what we're doing is everybody, I have so many private groups on Facebook for clients. They're creating their own private group and just uploading their pictures. So when it comes time for their session, um, I can just go through that with them. And it's funny that when they'll upload their pictures, then they want to write things about it. <laughs> they, want, they decorate the group, like they put their pictures and all this motivational stuff. And so that's been something that's worked really well. So come time for the day for me to do my coaching call. I just get on Facebook, I look at their group, and I go through their week, and I can see what they've been doing. That is a visual food blog, and a lot of times they've written something. That's been easier for people with all these, these smartphones, okay? But it's a food blog. Um, ABC. So you learned your ABC. So that's a, an important tip for you to take away is to do like ABC everything. Okay. All right. So bonus time. We're doing great. Okay. <laughs> do you know your brain type? So I mentioned that I'm a brain health certified um, coach. And so that's by Dr. Amen. You might want to make a note of his name. Dr. Amen does a lot of work on just he's the brain guy. That's the simplest way to say it. He's a brain guy. He has a number of clinics around the U.S. And he has scanned different brains over his career and so have all of his psychiatrists and brain imaging specialists across his practices. And so he's notorious for typing based on these images that he gets. So as a mental health therapist, I'm allowed to diagnose. And I'm supposed to diagnose what you have going on based on a cluster of symptoms that you self-report or present. I feel sad all the time. I feel like I'm isolated. I don't feel like I won't get up and do anything. I, you know, everything makes me cry. Um, and then probably somewhere in there, we're going to come up with depression. All right? Dr. Amen, like as a diagnosis, Dr. Amen said, you know, I'm not real comfortable with that approach. And he's a psychiatrist. I would like something a little bit more reliable. So he started scanning people's brains and identify the different areas of the brain that are responsible for different aspects of our behavior, um, whether it's focusing, whether it's our emotional center, whether it's our balance. Different lobes of the brain are responsible for all these different things. And so as a result of that, he would be able to show from his scans, well, you know the front part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex on this person, underactivated. That's a problem because prefrontal cortex is responsible for impulse control and focus and addiction problems. So if you have an underactive prefrontal cortex, and it's responsible for, it's your executive center, it's your mama, it's the government, it's the police department, all that house in the front of your head. It's what tells you to stop. If that part doesn't work, it's the part that tells you to be on time. If it doesn't work, you have problems in those areas. Things that require that skill set will be impacted. Right? So this will commonly be diagnosed as attention deficit when people have problems with their prefrontal cortex. Right? Outbursts, they're loud, things like that. He'd scan and he'd say that's underactive. But then he said, whoever said that only one part of your brain wasn't going to work well at a time? And when we diagnose, a lot of times what we diagnose is the thing that's most presenting for us, right? So it can take a while to find out that an adult that we're working with who's presenting with depression
depression is actually also struggling with problems with the front of the brain. Because the way I'm trained, we don't really go beyond our initial diagnosis very often, right? It's, 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 it's harder to do a secondary diagnosis sometimes. So what he has done is he said, but the limbic part of the brain is not working well either. The limbic part of the brain is overactive. They're really emotionally sensitive to everything, right? So now we've got the front part not working, but the emotional sense are overly active to everything. Mom is out and the child's in. Okay, now we have a problem. <laughs> okay, we have an emotional, impulsive eater. This is important information for you to have. It, it really takes the shame out of this whole experience, and it, it opens up understanding. And I've typed people, and he, he scanned uh, people that I've, I've sent, and you can have five different areas of your brain misfiring or overfiring at any given time, which can cause a host of problems for you. Um, the anterior cingulate gyrus area of your brain is deep in the middle. is responsible for being flexible as opposed to rigid, being able to shift gears. So what if you're somebody who gets emotional and you get stuck on being emotional? Right? And then you're impulsive. You're now the person at work screaming at somebody. <laughs> right? From my example earlier. Okay? So it's important to know this about yourself. And so that's what the brain typing work that I do is. It's how it's part of how I diagnose people now. And they'll do a self-report quiz, but they'll also hopefully have someone in their life report as well what they're observing. And then I do my normal intake and interview and try to do my normal diagnosis. And that gives me a much more accurate snapshot of what's going on and a much more accurate diagnosis. I have a lot of attention deficit in my adults who have problems with food. I have a lot of prefrontal cortexes that are out. Not check in. And then when I say, I'll say all day long, well, you know, your PFC's not working. Well, I don't understand why your PFC's not working. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so what do we got to do to get the PFC to work? Like, what is, what is our thing that we went over? So then it's not this whole thing about I don't understand myself. You just remember that that part of your brain that's responsible for that, it's just not working very well, right? So you're having problems with focus. Tiffany, I saw that thing and I just wanted it and I didn't want to eat my lunch because you have attention deficit. <laughs> Woo-wee! You know, impulse. Right? So but when you know that about yourself, then you have to say something like, okay, this is my attention deficit. I can't act on this. I can't act on this. I have an impulsive brain type. Does this make sense? Okay. So then what you have is type 1, you have a compulsive overhear. They tend to get stuck on the thought of food and feel compulsively driven. It tends to be a nighttime eater. They sneak and eat because they've been thinking about they're going to go get it when everybody goes to sleep. So that's what they're doing. And they typically, they're typically um, out of control around food, right? My client knows powerless, right? She premeditates a lot of times. So she's thinking about what she's going to eat way in advance. I'm going to go get it. This is that thing I want. It's not ooey. She's not an ooey. Uh, a compulsive overeater is not an ooey eater. She knows exactly what she wants. She's going to get exactly what she has to drive across town. She's going to get it. That's compulsive. Okay? Impulsive. Exhibits poor impulse control. It's easily distracted. Reaches for food without thinking about it. Research suggests that having untreated ADD nearly doubles the risk of being and that has been my observation. These are the clients that have a hard time because it requires mindfulness and being really present, okay, um, without proper treatment. Dr. Amen is one of the few people in this business who's completely comfortable saying, I don't care that nobody diagnoses attention deficit in your child. It does not matter to me. <laughs> because we're told as clinicians that if you don't catch it in, um, like, you know, 7 to 10, it doesn't exist. But that's not accurate. And he has a brain scan to show it. But I've had psychiatrists in the community push back when I said, this person has attention deficit for 25. And I don't care what you think, that's what I'm saying. No, it's just depression. This is a result of depression. This is attention deficit. Right? And if that's what you're dealing with, that can really be problematic with what you're trying to do. Untreated, undiagnosed. I use a lot of supplements for treating all this. Dr. Amen believes in supplements. There's a lot of people in his family that struggle with attention deficit. He's a psychiatrist. He can write prescriptions. He sees what um, he can scan and see what medication does to the brain. If he doesn't have to do that, he would rather not do it. So 
So that's why he's all the supplements that he has for brain health, and that's why we use so much, so many supplements as well to kind of help help the brain stay healthy. Okay, so it's nearly impossible for people untreated with this condition to adhere to a nutrition plan. That's what we feel like if it's not treated properly. Okay, impulsive, compulsive, overeating. So that's my brain type. <laughs> so I'm a compulsive, impulsive. So I had a good time trying to figure out how to get myself under control. Um, so I got a little bit of one and a little bit of two. Um, compulsive gamblers, for instance, are compelled to gamble, have little control of their impulses. So you can be compulsive, premeditate what you want, but then be a little wee person too. Right? So it's a hot mess if you don't deal with this properly. But my supplements, I do a lot of supplementation, I do a lot of things to help my brain work better. I'm somebody who moves every single morning because I need blood flow to my brain for it to act the way I need it to. Um, I'm completely able to manage those kinds of things. Uh, this information is empowering. I knew this after I got my nutrition and my food issues under control. But that's how I type, which it, it makes sense for kind of some of the things in my life in general. Sad or, over, uh, or emotional over years are going to be sad all the time, right? So they're going to be a depressed client. They're going to be the depressed person, right? Who's eating because they're sad. Um, low energy, low self-esteem, pain, uncomfortable. I tend to gain weight in the winter sometimes. I tell you, my practice in winter is so, it's, it's, a rough, it's a rough winter sometimes. People get real sad, get real moody, it being dark all the time. It's just, it can be really rough. And they'll gain weight, okay? Because they're eating because they're sad. Or anxious over eating. You're going to have a lot of um, physical complaints, a lot of digestive issues, um, pain, those kinds of things. Always worry about something, the what if, what if something bad happens. Those are those kinds of things, okay? And there's um, some quizzes and typing type things that I do with people to help them figure out which brain they are. And then each brain type needs something different. That's what you really want to know about this. So when I go to do a natural health session with somebody, I like to understand the brain type because the brain type requires a different kind of meal plan, right? So my brain type requires that I have carbohydrates at night, but during the day, I don't do well with carbohydrates. It makes me less smart. It turns off the front part of my brain. So I don't do well at night, though, if I don't have carbohydrates because it exacerbates impulsivity as well as anxiety. So if I have carbs at night, that gives me serotonin. That balances my brain, right? But the sad person, they need carbohydrates all day long, <laughs> okay? They need carbs all day long. The impulsive brain doesn't need to do carbohydrates very often. They need to be on a proteins and fats because they have to get the front part of their brain to work better. They, anything we can do to get the front part of their brain to work better. Think about um, attention deficit. It's usually treated with Ritalin, Adderall, speed. Things that speed your focus and shuttle blood into the front of your brain. That's what high protein, high fat diets do. They shuttle uh, uh, blood and energy into the front of the brain. Carbohydrates um, make you dull. So he says, well, Dr. Amen says it makes you dumb. So eating carbs, if you have an impulsive brain, it makes you stupid. That's what he likes to say. Just so we're very clear on what that's going to do. Okay? Um, I don't usually say that, but that gets the point of thought. Okay, so just as a bonus, real quick, I'm going to throw some food stuff out because people like to have food information when um, it's a talk about food. <laughs> but in the Think Thin program, we only talk about food kind of once a week and very briefly. So things that you might want to have in your diet, um, if it works for you and your brain and all kinds of other things, um, are the uh, foods that are listed here, and that's why. So, you know, apples full of fiber, uh, vitamin C, almonds, vitamin E, they're essential fatty acids. Really important, as we were talking about brain health, that you have lots of essential fatty acids in the diet. So brains really need fat. So low-fat diets are not good for your brain. And if, like we were talking about, depending on your brain type, you can have more problems with your brain on a low-fat diet. So all the brain types need essential fatty acids. So like fish oils, olive oil, um, avocado, those kinds of things, if you're on coconut oil, you need, you need fat in your diet. So we want our almonds. Blueberries are an antioxidant rich food, vitamin C and vitamin K. Sweet potatoes. We like sweet potatoes and we want to eat the skin. So eat the skin because there's lots of stuff in there and fiber. 
vitamin A and E. Salmon's a really good option, just make sure it's while hot. Okay, but that's a nice fatty fish. Nice fatty fish. Um, is that my kale? Is that what this is? Spinach? Oh, geez. And I did this thing with that. Uh, hold on. That was just a jar. Okay, so um, immunity. Same thing with kale. Same thing with kale. So it's good for your immune system. Okay, so these dark green veggies, the brighter the uh, fruit or vegetable is, the more nutrients it's going to have. Um, at the end there, broccoli is good for, uh, from a cancer prevention perspective, but if you have hormone problems, it is really good for helping you remove estrogen from your body and detox it. So, um, lots of broccoli in the diet. Um, anything that's red and orangey colored is high in beta carotene, which is really good for your eyes, right? So if you would do a vegetable juice, it would just have to be very low sodium and low carbohydrate. Um, and then wheat germ. Wheat germ, we don't do, uh, we're pretty gluten free in our milk panning here, but wheat germ is very high in vitamin E. Vitamin E is very healing. It repairs a lot of things in the body. So something like wheat germ, wheat germ oil is fantastic. And we love beans, we love um, lentils. They're very high in cholesterol and cholesterol and fiber, which will help you with cholesterol. I'm not afraid of cholesterol now. Cholesterol has um, lots of responsibilities in the body. It's when you're overproducing it and you're overproducing the wrong kind of cholesterol. Because there are multiple types of cholesterol and they're not all bad. Okay? That is it for today. I have done it. I did it on time, which is an accomplishment <laughs> for me. Um, if you think you would like to schedule a 15-minute consult, if you would like to talk about individual brain health coaching, weight loss therapy, um, you would just email Stephanie. Okay, she's my assistant, uh, and she would set up a 15-minute consult for free, and we would talk about whether or not that was something that would be appropriate for you um, if you wanted to work one-on-one. -on -one. And then if you are interested in the Think Them program, the Think Them program, you've got flyers for it, is covered by your insurance, okay? So, um, especially at this time of the year, most people don't have a deductible, a metric deductible, it's a good time. I used to get very busy as people try to get in for the years out because they've met their deductible. This is a good time to participate in the program. It starts, there's one on July 5th, one on July 10th. July 5th is the Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning one. And the one that starts on July 10th is the midday one. So that's the one that's going to be at 12 in the afternoon and 8.30 on Saturdays. And it's virtual. That one's virtual. Okay? But one way or the other, these programs are covered under your insurance. And we can explain how that works. But you, if you have out-of-pocket expense, if there's a copay or something like that, we can work with you on that or talk to you about that. But a lot of people don't even have it and um, what the Think Thing group includes is exercise, the coaching, as well as like nutrition coaching as well. Okay, so it's a, it's a great program. And again, Stephanie is your point person for that. You tell her you're interested, she's going to need to get your um, insurance card front and back. And she's going to need your date of birth so she can check your benefits and see what your options are. You take Aetna and Blue Cross Blue Shield. And some of the other companies, what we're exploring is a, a super bill to see if you're able to do a super bill working with me on an auto network for you. Okay, because um, they're talking to super bill. And if you want to do the slim down, then do the slim down or the belly fat blast, because you have flyers for that. Justin is your point person. And the hubby, um, he will get you registered for that. And it was my pleasure talking to you today. I love talking about this, so thank you. I appreciate your time. Do you have questions? Do we have questions? Yes. Um, we're, we will see if we can do a um, super bill for you. So one of my assistants that does the insurance piece of things, she um, can do a super bill if I'm not in network with who you're with, and you can see if we can do it after the fact. So if you pay up front, you pay up front, she creates a super bill, you submit, and you can see if you can get reimbursed. Okay. So yeah, if it's not at the Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, you will see if you can get reimbursed. And I would check, I would just check with your provider first and see if they accept super bills for out of network providers. Any other questions? I know you have lots of notes that y'all took. Questions about programs. I hope you can.
put this into play. <laughs> yes, Justin. Oh, you had a question. What about board meeting? Board meeting. It's, it's the same kind of thing. Somebody sent a question in online. Um, it's the same kind of thing. It would be using the ABCs, right, and challenging um, what you can do with your board. What I would do with somebody if they eat out of boredom is come up with things to really do to entertain themselves because that's going to be a trigger that you know is going to come. Right? So you need to have something in place with that trigger. Some of my clients, when they get off work at 5 o'clock, that is their witching hour, right, or 6 o'clock, they know that's when they're really vulnerable to, to going off track. If you've identified your trigger, your job now is to come up with a plan. So if you know you have that, that problem at that time of day, maybe you drink your cow on the way home from work. Maybe you relax and you listen to music. And then you don't go home and have to cook dinner because you are probably not going to feel like doing that. So dinner needs to be waiting for you, or you need to stop at Zoe's or chicken or someplace that's approved and get something that you can have if you've identified that's where you're vulnerable, just like when you're bored. Because okay? boredom is up. We have a very low tolerance for, for boredom these, these days in our society with all of our devices and gadgets. We don't want to be bored. It's uncomfortable. So, good question. Anything else? Okay, I will let you go. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Yes, I'm glad you made it. Yes.